another category of gene, protein, proto-oncogene, is a proto-oncogene called CMYC, NMYC, and LMIC. And these are all proto-oncogenes which code for proteins, which ultimately are transcription activators. These family of proto-oncogenes are nuclear regulatory proteins. If there is a translocation occurring or an amplification of the gene, it may result in specific tumors such as Burkitt's lymphoma, neuroblastomas, or small cell carcinoma. And incidentally, all of these malignancies here are considered very, very high grade. And also, coincidentally, they all kind of look a lot like each other, too. But just remember, another category of what we see an example of a proto-oncogene being converted into an oncogene by either an amplification or translocation are in the nuclear regulatory proteins. And uh, in this category, the MYC proto-oncogene is really the, the main one. Uh, also remember, this is, also, this is one of the three big and very, very widely studied uh, oncogenes. Besides the fact that it encodes for transcription factors, it also is involved with uh, apoptosis as well. So think about it. If you have a gene which is going to interfere with apoptosis because it's mutated into an oncogene, and apoptosis then doesn't occur, don't you think that that could very easily be a setting for carcinoma? Well, that's exactly what happens. Another gene, and which is the single most widely studied oncogene, is P53. I singled this one out because of all the oncogenes. This is the one that's the most widely studied. It's the most widely uh, available. And you know, there, there's even a, a, a urine test for P53 now, as well as RAS. These are the two dominant and most widely studied uh, oncogenes. Sometimes they'll refer to P53 or RAS as the gene, the oncogene, or the protein. It doesn't matter uh, because it's really all the same process. But let's just talk about the salient features of each one. And remember, uh, human malignancies, the vast majority of them, or certainly more than half, result, at least in part, because of mutation of normal P53. Normal P53 uh, activates DNA repair proteins. They also uh, are involved in the uh, G1 to S phase transition. They're the sentinel of it. And it's also like the MYC gene, protein, oncogene, something that initiates uh, or is involved in apoptosis as well. And because it's present in uh, more than uh, the mutation of uh, p53 is present in more than half of all human cancers you know this is something worth studying uh, similarly another really uh, widely studied oncogene is ras it has a, a, a variety of uh, letters in front of it depending on the name of the person uh, who discovered it but it's also uh, an extremely dominant oncogene and present in a very, very large portion of human cancers as well. That's why out of the long list of oncogenes, what we have or will be talking about, the ones which will probably be the most earliest commercially available and already are even for things like, you know, serum and urine tests are P53 and RAS. P53 is called P53 because it was originally called tumor protein 53. They just shortened it to P53. And uh, the RAS gene was uh, discovered uh, many, many years ago, perhaps in the 60s or 70s, uh, in uh, rat sarcomas, and that's why it's called RAS. And uh, a lot is known about this. Here is an actual RAS protein, and like the precise chemical uh, structure of the expressions of these genes uh, are very well uh, worked out. So not to make you go crazy into seeing something like that, but you know, that's exactly what the protein looks like. Let's talk about the category of the misnomer tumor suppression or tumor suppressor genes. Uh, these genes do not suppress tumors. They are normally suppressors or regulators, probably better, of normal growth. So once again, 
let's take the analogy. If you have a gene which expresses a protein which ultimately regulates growth or suppresses growth and it's mutated, then you're going to have loss of growth suppression, aren't you? What is cancer? Cancer is loss of growth suppression. So here's a wide variety of things I'm going to throw at you. They're common ones. I'm not going to throw a million of them at you. I'm only going to throw about 15. Uh, transforming growth factor beta, uh, a suppression of the gene which codes for that could very easily result in colon cancer, and actually it does. Another tumor suppressor gene is E. cadherin, and a mutation of that would involve in lack of suppression, which perhaps would ultimately express itself as carcinoma of the stomach, and it does that. And uh, NF stands for uh, neurofibromatosis. Remember in type 1 and type 2, there's a wide variety of neural tumors. Well, those are the genes that are the, su the uh, suppressor genes that are mutated. Uh, adenomatous polyps of the colon slash B cadherin. Sup uh, mutations of those suppressor genes wi might wind up being GI uh, cancers or melanomas. Uh, SMAD of various types might wind up being GI cancers. RB, appropriately named, a mutation of the RB gene, suppressor gene, might wind up being a retinoblastoma. We already said P53 being a regulator at many different levels, apoptosis, cell cycle. Uh, mutation of that winds up being most human cancers. The WT gene, appropriately named Wilms tumor, we talked about INC4 for the uh, inhibitor of kinase in the cell cycle. Might wind up being, uh, if it was mutated, give rise to GI and breast tumors. An interesting thing uh, about this is that if you have a uh, mutation of this gene, which is uh, occurs during the person's life, it might wind up as a uh, cancer in one location. If, on the other hand, the P16 inc 4 a complex uh, mutation is inherited rather than occurs after birth, it might wind up uh, classically as a malignant melanoma. So mutations of genes, whether they occur uh, as an inherited gene or as an acquired mutation, could wind up uh, giving uh, g give rise to a whole different types of malignancies. As you might guess, BRC is the breast cancer gene. Uh, KLF6, mutation of that suppressor gene might wind up giving rise to human carcinoma of the prostate, and indeed it, done, it does. So you can remember that uh, a large portion of the so-called suppressor genes, when they are uh, mutated, uh, might wind up giving rise to human cancers, and they do. We talked about the concept of apoptosis, and we said that if apoptosis is interfered with or the proteins which normally control and regulate apoptosis are mutated to be oncogenes, like these three here, and cells normally aren't uh, killed when they should be, could, they, could that be a process of leading to cancer? Of course it does. So evasion of apoptosis is a very key factor in carcinogenesis, too. Uh, there was a, um, uh, a B-cell lymphoma, uh, which we was this process was demonstrated in. So the BCL2 gene is a gene which, when mutated, uh, winds up uh, being an, an evasion of apoptosis and therefore a factor for carcinogenesis. And we already told you that the P53 oncogene and the MYC family of oncogenes are also involved with apoptosis as well. Um, let's just open the door here for the uh, next topic and we'll talk about it more. I want to introduce you to the spell checker concept. Uh, in the spell checker concept, uh, we have um, processes uh, which wind up checking the uh, correct order of DNA. If, for example, this process is interfered with, you have a variety of uh, potential tumors. And we'll talk about that in the next group.